How's it going everybody? Ed Ricker here. A couple months ago, I put out a video reviewing the new Gladius Mini by a company called Chasing Innovations. It's a really cool 4K underwater drone, 300 foot tether, dedicated remote control, and a base price of 1500 US dollars. So if that sounds like a lot to you, they have something else that they just came out with. So this is the Dory. This is the Chasing Dory underwater drone. Kind of a funny take on the uh, Finding Dory movie. So yeah, this guy has three vertical thrusters, two right there and one right at the back. You can kind of, there it is. And then uh, to the back here, you have two horizontal thrusters. This is also your data connection, which is going to lead back to the buoy. Now, the main difference here, and, you know, of course, price and capability and stuff, but the main difference between this and the Gladius Mini is the buoy. So with the Gladius Mini, we actually had a ground station, which would uh, sit on shore, and then your tether would be strung from the ground station to the drone. Well, now we have a either 10 or 15 meter tether. So this is the uh, 15 meter, about 49 feet, uh, that goes right to the buoy. And this would float, which means that if you wanted to take this out uh, in a boat or something, you could plop this off the edge and you can still maintain your, your, your control and your signal. The other main difference is how you control it after that. So it's a uh, Wi-Fi controlled uh, drone, underwater drone here. So you're only using your phone. I'm using my Google Pixel 3 XL. Looking forward to the, the next one coming out soon, but right now still rocking the 3 XL. So it comes with this case, which is nice. It's kind of like waterproof. So you can put this soaking wet into uh, your backpack just like this. I like that. And as with the Gladius Mini, we also have some headlights, which are gonna help with murky water or flying, or it's flying, I keep saying flying, diving, piloting this thing around uh, maybe in dark water as well. I do like how it's simplified. Not having the controller like the Gladius Mini had simplifies this whole process and makes it a lot easier. Using just your phone, the app is actually a lot more simple too. There's not so many bells and whistles that this thing does. So um, the, the control features are much more simple. And so you only have one video setting, you know, that type of thing. Now I operated this around a rock quarry recently and I was able to go around various parts of the rock quarry kind of around the perimeter of it and drop this thing off the edge. So in that situation, I did keep the buoy just on shore. I didn't, I didn't want to be throwing this off and then have to dive in and get it if it did end up floating away. Now there's a couple things that I don't necessarily like about it so much and I think it's more of just a mechanical issue that can be, you know, fixed with next renditions or maybe just manufacturing. One of the things is that when you connect the tether to the drone and then the other side of the tether to your buoy, it turns on, hey, hey, we're on now. And this is emitting Wi-Fi. But the connection I've found wiggles around a little bit. So even though I'm turning this in, I'm really getting this tight, um, I have found it kind of wiggle apart and lose connection. It's not doing it right now, but I, I promise you it happened at the quarry a few times and made me nervous. First, let's connect to the, uh, the Wi-Fi. So what I'm gonna do Find the Dory Wi-Fi right there, connected. And here's something very important that you have to do with Android, especially Android 10. I'm not sure if this, you know, m messed with Android 9 or anything like that. When you connect to this and it asks you what you want to do with the connection, you have to tap for options and then say that, yes, stay connected, even though it has no internet access. That way we should be able to then connect to the app. And, and I, I realized that when I was at the quarry, burned up about 10, 15% of the battery just sitting out there trying to figure this out. Open up the chasing app and then hit start once it says it's connected. And there we go. We have our image. Check it out. So you have photo mode and video mode. This is charged up at 100%. So that means it has about an hour of battery life if you're cruising around. And now if you're just kind of floating, I'm not sure you might have longer battery life if you're not moving at all, but I'm imagining that moving around and stuff, it's about one hour. You have low and high speed, so that's L and H, and you can turn on your motors by pressing there, and there we go. It doesn't know what to do because there's no water. Let's not do that for very long. You have your 
LED toggle there on the left. So we're toggling on and off our LEDs. Not as bright as the Gladius, but they're still good to have. You know, they're still good to, to uh, be able to toggle on if you need to, if you can't see much while you're down there. Video mode shoots at 1080 at 30 frames a second. And there's only one photo option. It's just a shutter button. Now there is some GPS connectivity here and some signal strength, telemetry and everything. Uh, you also have your depth. You have your water temperature, and honestly, there's not much else. The, the app is a lot more simple than the Gladius Mini app. Uh, the way you control it then is you press the screen like you may have done with mobile gaming, press with your thumbs, and, and the screen turns into these surface joysticks, if you will, and, and you move around by moving your thumbs. And so at that point, you know, your, your left thumb, you can program to be uh, like the US mode two, where throttle would be up and down, and then turning would be left and right, that type of thing. There's no thruster that can move the drone left and right like this, but it can yaw. So it cannot move this direction, but it can move forward, backward, up, down, and turn like this. On the right of the app, by the record button, there's also your pitch, and you can pitch up or down 45 degrees. Now, I've inadvertently clicked on that many times while trying to just simply fly because it's near the record button and also your right stick, uh, your, your screen stick there. So I kind of wish that would be maybe placed a little bit different because when I'm holding my thumb like this, I'm, I'm constantly hitting it if I'm not looking at it. The drone itself doesn't actually have a power button. It just turns on when you turn it, when you plug it into the buoy with the tether. So it's either on or off. And there's not much else you can do uh, troubleshooting wise if something's going wrong. So um, it's just really simple. It keeps it simple. And uh, I think it's pretty, pretty cool. Now it has about 14.6 gigabytes of internal storage, but there's no ejectable SD card and there's also no plug, no USB or anything like that, which means that you have to upload over Wi-Fi from your drone to your phone. And if you want to get it from your phone to your computer, you have to connect your, com your phone to your computer or somehow get it onto your computer. So that's a little clunky. And that was uh, one of my main issues with the Gladius Mini was just how long that took to transfer. The good thing is though, if you're only shooting 1080, you're not shooting 4K video, transfers go a lot quicker. Not such a big deal, I guess. Now here's the video feed, as you can see. Uh, one of the other things that uh, kind of bummed me out a little bit is as you get closer to an object, it goes out of focus. So the focus range seems to be like three feet away. So there was a couple times I found some fish. I was making some fish friends down there. And uh, as it got closer, as they got closer, they turned blurry. Also, if you're trying to inspect something, like you're up by a, a, a rock or, or coral and you're really close, it's gonna get blurry. So you have to stay a little bit further away because that, that focus uh, spot is, is a couple feet at least away from the drone. Now, zooming in on this, as you can see, this is their charger. Um, it charges just the drone. Uh, there's no charging of the, the, the buoy. It's just charging the drone. The tether seems like the same tether that the Gladius Mini uh, came with. And if you watched my video on that, you know that I was pretty rough with that thing. I was holding on to the Gladius Mini from high up with the tether to get it over the edge of the rat quarry I was at that day. So, I mean, it can hold the weight. That means if you do get in trouble with this, the battery dies or whatever, you can pull it back. One of the things that I noticed, and maybe it was a fluke, but as I started to drain the battery and I got to like 30%, some of the motors stopped working. And I was talking with Russ of 51 Drones and he was noticing the same thing. You're gonna have to keep this more than 30, 35% charged if you want this to operate uh, normally. Anyway, check the link in the video description. Also check out their Kickstarter that they're uh, doing with the, dr the Dory. Uh, it's gonna be released really, really soon. And uh, yeah, support them if you, if you think this is a cool thing. I do. Anyway, until next time, happy flying.